Hello and welcome. As promised, in my last video, I'm going to talk about the Evil Dead verse, the movies, and the TV show. Ash vs. Evil Dead. Not including the 2013 remake. I decided to present this video as a visualization to allow myself to fully write this review and make my point concise and comprehensive without trying to develop a review off the cuff. Let's get this started. The Evil Dead released in 1981 and stars Bruce Campbell as Ash Williams, the protagonist of this verse who travels with his four friends to this cabin in the woods where they come across this tape recorder with a man's voice chanting something from an evil book that's also there called the Necronomicon that summons demons. Ash stops at nothing to stay alive and fight for his life as his friends gets possessed one by one. When Evil Dead 2 came to light in 1987, the director Sam Raimi and his crew from the original did not own the rights to that project. As a result, they decided to film Evil Dead 2 as a restart, a requel if you will. Evil Dead 2 starts off with Ash, once again played by Bruce Campbell, going back to that same cabin in the woods, this time with his girlfriend, Linda. He comes across a tape recorder just like in the original, with a man's voice explaining his discovery of the Necronomicon. A passage from the book was spoken, and Ash's girlfriend gets possessed, and is forced to fight the forces of evil with some unexpected campers that just so happens to pass by. Evil Dead 2 is the film where Ash's hand gets possessed. He cuts his hand off and as a result he invents the famous chainsaw hand we all know and love. The movie ends with Ash being sucked into this vortex and travels back in time to the Dark Ages so it begins Army of Darkness. This film sees Ash transported to the year 1300 AD where he forms an army to battle the undead and retrieve the Necronomicon so he can return home and to the present time. Ash vs. Evil Dead made its debut on October 31st of 2015 on Stars Network. The story follows 30 years after the events of the original trilogy. Ash recalls having a recent marijuana addled poetry read from the Necronomicon with a young prostitute. Having realized this, he along with a couple of his co-workers go on the mission to stop the forces of evil. Along the way, they run into Ruby, a mysterious woman who wants the book. Turns out, she's one of the Dark Ones who wrote the Necronomicon. Ash returns to the sinister cabin with his gang to try and stop this evil. Ruby then takes the book, betraying Ash, and creates these demonic kids. After an epic battle, the two comes to a truce, and all is well for now. Season 2 starts with Ash and the gang in Jacksonville having the time of their lives. That is, until things go sideways real fast. Turns out Ruby's demonic kids from the first season betrays her, forcing her to break the truce. Ash and the gang then travel to Elk Grove, Ash's hometown, in search of Ruby, which leads to Ball, a powerful demon with mind-controlling abilities and Ruby's ex-husband. It was around this time that the filmmakers got the right to use content from Army of Darkness. This gave the writers permission to have the characters go back in time to the year 1982 after something horrible happens to one of the main characters in hopes to getting the Necronomicon from the cabin before young Ash gets a chance to read it. After thinking they defeated Maul, he shows back up with a younger Ruby, kills the older Ruby, and finally a battle between Ash and Maul takes place, leaving Ruby no choice 
but to betray Maul. The ground of the cabin opens up, sucking Maul back into the depths of hell, completely burning the cabin to the ground, trapping evil for good. Or was that really Ruby's intentions? After the Necronomicon is found once again and is read, Ash and the gang are forced to fight evil for the last time as season 3 was the series finale. This time, Ash finds out that he's been married this whole time as a result of a drunk night and has a daughter named Brandy. Meanwhile, Ruby gets a hold of the book and performs a ritual causing her to be impregnated, giving birth to an evil spawn who grows up eventually fast resembling Ash as evil Ash. Hoping to destroy Ash, her plans fail much to her dismay. The season unravels and we find out that Ruby betrayed the other Dark Ones who soon comes after her. Terror and chaos rains down as evil spreads, terrorizing the world. The final showdown sees Ash battling Kandar, a huge, gigantic creature. After killing it, strapping the Kandarian dagger to a tank's missile he fires, killing it instantly. In the aftermath, he is rescued by the Knights of Sumerian, a group of anti deadite warriors. He wakes up in a post-apocalyptic future, where he is greeted by this really beautiful robot who gets him prepared for what's to come. Sadly, we will most likely never be able to see where they were going with this storyline as this series has been cancelled. Plus, Bruce Campbell has already stated that he's retired from the Ash Williams character for good. I just hate that they left us hanging like that, which happens a lot in Hollywood. In closing, this entire verse has been one wild and great ride. The direction, music, atmosphere, cinematography, writing, especially with the series, you get a much more in-depth understanding of the characters that the movies only mention a few times. For example, you get a deeper look at who the Dark Ones was, and you find out about Ash's parents, mostly his father. I'm going to rate this as a whole, guys. The Evil Dead verse gets an A+. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching for those of you who did. Like, subscribe, and get reputized. Stay tuned for more reviews. Peace and rip out.